Is matchmaking rigged in Brawl Stars? I mean, surely this must be rigged, right? How about this? Or even this? Okay, that's just bad Photoshop. <laughs> Hello fellow brawlers, I'm Carl Steinman, it's time to brawl. My question for you is, have you ever pushed that play button and uh, sat there watching that star spin and spin and spin and ask yourself, will this game be the most amazing game of my life or will I be paired up against somebody with 200 trophies more than me and get squashed? Maybe you've wondered how long is this supposed to take or how exactly does matchmaking work? Or maybe you've asked yourself, if matchmaking is rigged in Brawl Stars. Well, today we're gonna to be taking a deeper look into the matchmaking system. First of all, I'm going to be explaining everything there is to know about matchmaking and how it works. Second, I'm gonna explain how and why certain mismatches like this or like this actually happen. And lastly, I will be giving you those seven tips to manipulate matchmaking to make it as fair as possible for you. Maybe even to uh, give yourself a little bit of an advantage. But before we jump into that, guys, I did wanna just get real with you guys just for one quick moment and thank you guys so much for all of your support that you've shown by watching my videos, uh, for subscribing to my channel. I'm growing ridiculously fast right now. But most importantly, I wanted to thank you guys for all of your positive comments in the comment section, guys. It means the world to me. I just love you guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay guys, now let's talk about matchmaking with starting with the the most important thing and that is going to be individual brawler count meaning that the number one thing that matters most in matchmaking is the individual trophy count for the brawler that you are jumping into a game mode not total trophies. In fact, total trophies actually do not matter at all with matchmaking except for one small exception and that is going to be brand new players that just barely started playing Brawl Stars. That's right guys, brand new players with a very small total trophy count will only get paired up against other new players and if there aren't enough new players then I'm actually pretty sure that they get paired up against bots sometimes and those bot matches seem to disappear somewhere between 100 and 200 trophies. So I think that's about the cutoff mark where once you reach that in total trophies it doesn't matter matter what your total trophies is anymore for matchmaking. The only thing that matters is the trophy count for that individual brawler that you're playing with. Now, individual brawler trophy count is the most important, but what about team matchmaking? There are two important parts to matching one team against the other. The first is um, average team trophies, which gets considered a little bit, but way more important than that is the player on the team with the highest trophies for their brawler. In essence, it will take the highest trophy count of the brawler from one team and pit it up against the highest trophy count against a brawler on the opposite team while slightly considering average team trophy count. But it is completely within the matchmaking parameters to put two teams up against each other where one team has one player with 400 trophies but two other teammates that are only at 100 trophies and put them against another team with three players at 400 trophies. Another interesting thing with matchmaking is that it also takes server ping into consideration. One of the first things that happens when you jump into the matchmaking is actually compares your ping across multiple servers that people are playing, playing Brawl Stars on. It then finds the lowest ping and tries to match you up against other players that are also playing on that server so that players will actually experience as little lag as possible. This is different than device lag or like a really poor internet connection. What I'm actually talking about here is how long it takes for the inputs that you put into the game to actually reach the server and make it happen in the game. The specific brawlers you choose actually also goes into the matchmaking. As much as possible, the matchmaking tries to keep duplicate brawlers from playing on the same team. Where things can go wrong is if there's an excessive amount of people playing one individual brawler. For example, if there are 300 players all playing bull and going into the matchmaking, but only 100 other players that are playing with every other brawler, uh, then eventually the matchmaking, rather than just like making those bull players have a ridiculously long line before they can actually play a match, it'll just eventually start putting bulls on the same team. So it doesn't happen very often, but it does happen every now and then. Another interesting thing that goes into matchmaking is the past matches that you've had, so that ideally you won't face the same players over and over again. Matchmaking will also try to make it so that you do not end up facing against club members, but the only way to guarantee that you won't face your same club members is if the leader of the room is also in your club. However, if you actually hit the play again after a match, there's still a chance that it will actually pit you up against your club members. Lastly, guys, matchmaking is not based off of how leveled up your brawlers are. So while Brawl Stars is very free-to-play friendly in comparison to other Supercell games, having brawlers that are highly upgraded will give you a good advantage. Okay, guys, so that is the majority of everything that goes into matchmaking. There are a few other things that are very minor details that you don't really need to worry about. And in an ideal world, that's exactly how matchmaking works every single time. But this 
is not an ideal world. And mismatches like this or this still happen every day. So let's go ahead and explain why and when this happens, and then I'm gonna give you seven tips on how to avoid unfair matchmaking. The reason why unfair matchmaking can happen is because everything that I mentioned earlier gets thrown out the window according to one important factor, and that's gonna be time. Like Kronos time. Uh, Kairos, I'm pretty sure you meant to say Kairos time. Come on, noob time. Didn't you pay attention in your ancient Greek classes? Kairos is opportune time, but Kronos is chronological time. Who in the world takes an ancient Greek class? <sighs> Stay in school, kids. Now, one thing that's very integral to the matchmaking system is that Brawl Stars prioritizes a fast matchmaking experience over a perfectly fair matchmaking experience. Honestly, fast matches is one of the reasons why I love Brawl Stars so much, even if some of the matches aren't 100% fair. Essentially, as more time ticks by, wink, each of the restrictions that I talked about earlier become looser and looser and looser. Let's say you have a brawler at 300 trophies and you jump into a showdown match. In a perfect world, you would face nine other players that are playing on the same server, have the same amount of ping, and who are also all playing brawlers at 300 trophies. But the chances are that nine other players at 300 trophies on the same server pressing the button within a few seconds of you pressing the button is very slim. So after a certain period of time of not finding enough players to actually start a match, the search parameters start to become wider. Maybe after a few seconds, it'll start to include uh, players within 25 trophies of your character, or maybe it starts accepting players with higher ping or something like that. As even more time ticks by without finding enough players for the match to start, the trophy range increases more and more, and other restrictions start to loosen as well. If enough time goes by without finding enough players to actually start the match after several minutes you can start facing opponents with 300 to 500 trophies more than you you can be faced off against players on the opposite side of the world thus giving you really bad shot delay you can even start facing teams of three mortises all on the same team in brawl ball and you can even face the same team back to back to back. There was actually one time where I faced the same team three times in a row. It was really sad because we just crushed them all three times. I'm pretty sure that they all smashed their phone with a hammer afterward. Now most players won't experience this very often except for top players, okay? And I know that it sucks when you are playing with like a four or 500 brawler and you end up getting face off against an 800 trophy brawler, but I do think that you should remember that they probably waited a super long time for that match and they probably also felt bad for this mismatch just like you did. The longest that I've had to wait for a match was almost eight minutes and we ended up playing off against players that were like around 300 trophies or so and we had people on our team that had 900 trophies. And and we were playing in the middle of the night in beta before there were lots of players actually playing the game, but we crushed them. It, was, it wasn't even fun for us, and I'm sure that it wasn't fun for them. I wouldn't be surprised if they blew up their phone with a firecracker afterwards. Okay guys, so hopefully this answers your question in explaining that matchmaking is not rigged. It can be frustrating at times though, like if you're facing off against a team with more trophies than you, or you have like really bad shot delay in a match, or you have to wait eight minutes to play a single game. But there are some things that you can do to avoid this unfair matchmaking, and I've got seven tips. Starting off with number one, and that is to consider dropping out of the matchmaking system if it seems to be taking longer than you expect it to. If you're playing a brawler up to 200 trophies and matchmaking takes a very long time, it's very likely that you will end up facing somebody that has a higher trophy count than you. From 200 to 400 trophies, it could go either way, but most likely it's gonna be pretty balanced, so I actually wouldn't matter about long matchmaking from 200 to 400 trophies. From 400 to 500 trophies, Trophies, there is a very good chance that you will be facing some players that are much higher than you because the matchmaking above 500 is actually really slow in comparison to the matchmaking that is below 500. And the holy grail is when you're at 600 trophies or higher and you're playing with other players that are at 600 trophies and you'll start to get really easy matchups against players that are 400 to 500 trophies on their brawlers and just aren't quite as experienced as you are. But if the match doesn't start soon, there's a good chance that you're in for a very long wait time. Second tip is kind of sad, but that is don't play with people that are on opposite sides of the world. If you do so, it is very likely that you will end up having shot delay or that your teammate will end up having shot delay, which can greatly impact the battle, especially for brawlers that rely on movement while they're attacking like uh, Mortis. He's, he's so awful to play with shot delay, it's so hard. That kind of goes along with tip number three, and that is to not play late at night. If you play late at night, it is a very good chance that fewer people in your region will actually be online, which will mean that you'll have to end up waiting for longer matches and 
the games are likely to be more unfairly matched up, and there's also a chance, even if they're not on your team, that you'll end up having shot delay if your opponent is actually battling from a different region of the world. One exception may be if you're like really high in trophies and uh, you want to abuse the matchmaking system, and that would work because it would increase the search parameters and there's a chance that you'll end up facing people that are uh, lower trophies on your same region or even lower trophies on a different region or something like that. But if you do this, make sure you're um, prepared for long wait periods of time and just know that the people that you're going to be playing against are likely going to hate you forever. <laughs> Tip number four is do not play too much of the same game mode for too long a period of time. Namely, if the matchmaking starts to take a while. Because past matches get factored in, the more people that you end up facing will result in fewer people that matchmaking will likely pit you up against first. And typically people will jump into one game mode and stick to that game mode for a long period of time. So playing the same game mode over and over again, even for a long period of time, will eventually result in the search parameters having to increase the amount of trophies, and there's a good chance you'll end up starting to face off against players that are higher trophies than you. This is especially true for Showdown, where you have nine enemies instead of just three enemies, because you're gonna start cycling through those players three times as fast. And this will become less of an issue as more people start playing Brawl Stars, but it still can be an issue, especially if you think matchmaking is taking longer than it should. If matchmaking is taking longer than it should, it might be a good thing for you to consider actually just taking a break and then coming back to Showdown or the game mode that you were playing or switching to a different game mode. Tip number five is to consider playing a different brawler if matchmaking starts to take a while, assuming that brawler is at a different trophy range than your current one. Because matchmaking is based on the brawlers, if you start to see unfair matchmaking, because matchmaking is based on the trophies of your individual brawler, if you switch to a brawler that's at a different trophy range, maybe you want to push up your higher trophy brawler or like push your lower trophy brawler, or whatever, you may see that you'll actually start facing opponents that are a little bit more similarly matched and you'll have less issues with matchmaking in general anyway. Tip number six is to play with teammates that are around your similar trophy level so you don't end up facing a Opponents that either you or your teammates can't seem to handle the skill of. That being said, if the lowest trophy member on your team actually has enough skill to match the opponents that you're facing off against, it really shouldn't matter. But don't expect to get carried if you're at 100 trophies and your teammates has 500 trophies because it is incredibly hard to carry anybody in Brawl Stars because of how team oriented it is. Tip number seven is to not hit that play again button if you are playing when a lot of your club members are playing. Otherwise, you might end up being forced to play against them and that can result in hurt feelings if you beat them and they're very sad. This tip isn't like super important for a lower trophy clubs, but if you are in a higher trophy club, it can make a very big difference, especially if you're in a trophy pushing club like Nova or Tribe or the Bandit family, because that's where I'm at right now. Cactus Bandits, look them up. We're OP. Anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope that it was useful for you to know exactly what you need to do to improve your matchmaking experience in Brawl Stars. Make sure you subscribe for future awesome Brawl Stars tips just like in this video. <laughs> and I Really did want to thank you guys once again for all the positivity and support that you guys have shown on my channel. And I want to give an especially huge thank you to my YouTube members and my Patreon sponsors for helping support the channel in such a big way. For now, this is Kairos Time ticking by, and we will see you in Brawl Stars.